What's up Vinyl like Puma? This is Guys here, back with another Wonderlands video and today I want to talk about money. And before we start, I'd like you guys to take a guess who inspired the intro to test your YouTube knowledge. If you'd like a hint, food is weighed in grams and grams are a measurement of mass and, well, that may have given it away. But like I said, we're here to talk about money and how to get money in this game. After all, even the best legendary equipment at max level only sells for about 20,000 gold or so, and it's not like you can just get legendaries every time you farm a boss. So we've got to figure out some other method for acquiring money. Otherwise, how are we going to get the millions required to get those bigger inventory upgrades? Or even just several hundred thousand for those cool unique quest rewards that are available at vendors? Now I do want to establish a premise with this video, or explain the philosophy behind it. The methods I'm about to describe here should work great for those that don't have anyone else to play Wonderlands with, and also for those that want to avoid glitches or exploits. Not that there is anything necessarily wrong if you've used those glitches or exploits, but my assumption is they will eventually be patched, and thus, having a fallback method will be extremely useful and helpful. I'd also recommend that if you're watching this and your character is below level 40, get to level 40 first. This is because the best money sources aren't really available to you at a lower level. That said, if you want some more money, the best thing to do would be to simply sell your gear you're not using anymore to a vendor, as well as just play through the game, complete challenges and side quests, and in general just level up. The faster you can get to level 40, the better and the easier it will be to take advantage of the money farming methods I'm about to describe. But without further ado, let's get into what I believe to be the best method for gold farming in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. The best way to make money as you get higher in level is to simply get more gold pickups. In other words, the more individual gold bags or gold bars you can make appear on screen, the more money you can acquire. This is because the amount of gold awarded appears to be a specific amount for each gold pickup. So as a rough example, if you get 500 gold at level 40, and 900 gold at level 40 chaos level 20 per pickup, that number is going to be consistent for the most part. We'll get into some potential discrepancies you can encounter later. I think this is the best way to do it, simply because selling loot may net you 3,000 to 7,000 or so per item. The funny thing is, you can go to the tutorial level, or really any level, open a chest and potentially get that much gold without having to have sold anything. Thus, that's why I'd recommend gold pickups because you can acquire gold much faster if you go this route. However, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you guys some bad news. As of Hotfix 1.0.1.0g, and granted this may change in the future, gold acquisition is really buggy. To illustrate this for you, load into a game at level 40 and pick up a gold bag. Like you're seeing here on video, you'll get a certain number. Then open up your chaos ranks and go to the highest number you currently have available. Hit apply, let everything reload, and then acquire a new gold bag. It should be more. However, then save and quit, reload your character, and then acquire a new gold bag. You'll notice that the amount of gold acquired is lower than it was when you applied your chaos ranks, meaning that something is not loading correctly. This is the bad news about gold acquisition in Wonderlands at the moment. So, we're going to be limited in going into the inner mechanics of gold farming or whatever. That said, we do have quite a few ways to work around these issues, and there are still fairly reliable ways to get to 1 to 1.5 million gold in about 10 minutes. Or get gold while doing other things at the same time, like farming experience or even legendaries. Though we should get into some preparations you really should do first. If you've not yet done so, I would highly recommend you complete as many challenges as you can. More specifically, I would highly recommend you complete as many of the overworld challenges as you can. Simply having the shrine buffs from the overworld will make sure you're getting more gold. As far as I can tell, loot luck doesn't appear to increase your gold drops, but again, maybe this will change in a future update. Even still, completing all of the challenges will not only help you to acquire gold and experience in the process, but it will also help improve your character in other areas. I would also highly recommend you take the time to farm a goblin pickaxe. It's not necessary for what I believe to be the best method for farming gold, but you may want to pick one up all the same. I'll show a dropping here on video, but you can get one of these fairly reliably from the ancient obelisk enemy that's in Mount Craw named Pigwort. Getting your hands on a goblin pickaxe will guarantee that whenever you melee an enemy, you will get a gold pickup. 
After three to four swipes, that could potentially be 4,000 gold depending on the circumstances. And even beyond that, the Goblin Pickaxe is a good passive buff for your character as well because you move faster and get improved action skill and spell cooldown whenever you pick up money. And this appears to extend to crystals in chaos mode as well, so again, just get a Goblin Pickaxe. But without further ado, let's talk methods starting with the most obvious. In my view, there are a few bosses that are ideal for farming gold. There's the story boss drill located in the Drowned Abyss, as well as two side quest mission mini bosses. One of which is the Dreadlord in Karnak's Wall, and the other is Castor in Tangle Drift. Assuming you are level 40, no chaos levels, no side quests, and you want to farm gold, Drill is probably going to be your best bet. Drill drops more gold when defeated than the Dragon Lord or the Banshee. I've found I can net around 70,000 per farm, and this is excluding any of the items he drops. So if you want to pick those up, quit out, and then sell them to a vendor, be my guest. Even if you're already at Chaos level 20, going back and fighting a non-Chaos buffed Drill will take about 2 minutes or less. You also have the option of taking on the Dreadlord in Karnak's Wall. To do this, you'll have to have completed the quest Spell to Pay, which unlocks Part 1 of Ancient Powers. Complete Ancient Powers Parts 1 through 4, and you'll unlock Part 5, which is an infinitely repeatable side quest. You can net around 30 to 40,000 gold in gold pickups at Chaos Level 20 alone here, and the quest can be completed in around a minute. In two minutes, this is about 60 to 80,000 gold. Finally, you have Castor. To access Castor, you'll need to complete the A Small Favor side quest in Tangle Drift. Like Drill, you can usually take this guy out in under two minutes or less, and he drops quite a bit of gold. I've been getting around 70 to 80,000 at Chaos Level 20, and like the Dreadlord, you can regularly get some legendary drops here as well. Assuming you get tired of boss farming though, let's talk about the next method which involves the Goblin Pickaxe. Now there are two ways to get gold with the pickaxe. There's the AFK approach as well as the active approach. To do the AFK approach, equip your pickaxe, enter your options menu, turn off controller vibration, and then map your melee to the right trigger on your controller. Then go to Bright Hoof and go to the target dummies located there, and then proceed to rubber band your controller while you slowly but surely get money drops. Now admittedly, this isn't the best use of your pickaxe since the gold drops are really low, but if you don't want to play the game at a particular moment or if you want to farm gold while you sleep, this is going to be the best method. And you can of course do this at any level, you don't need to be level 40, chaos level 20. The more active approach involves meleeing enemies in the wild or as you play through the game. To ensure the most success here, go to any area in the game with mobs you want to kill, and be sure to open a lockbox slash chest that would normally have gold in it. This appears to quote unquote set the amount of gold you can obtain per strike with the pickaxe. So rather than having to settle for a measly 1 to 4 gold per strike, you'll get whatever you normally get on a gold pickup assuming you're opening a chest first. Now it's important to note that this is in a single player game and I haven't tested it in multiplayer, but this method of setting the gold drop appears to make the Goblin Pickaxe much more effective. So if you're going to grind for gold by just playing through the game normally, I'd say the Goblin Pickaxe is the way to go. If you'd like a recommendation of where to do this, I like Queen's Gate, though realistically you can do it just about anywhere. And in two minutes you can very easily accrue well over 100,000 gold, just from smacking enemies enough times. You may have some issues like I am here at survivability, but assuming your build is more melee focused, you may have more success. But let's move to what I think is the best method which involves the overworld. I think this is currently the best and easiest method. While it does require some preparation, so for example, you'll want to get all of the shrines and preferably all of the challenge buffs, the advantage is that you can simply run this route and get quite a lot of gold and you don't need a goblin pickaxe to do it. What I like to do is start just outside of Queen's Gate in the overworld, run along the path to some crates, smash them, run up the hill towards a crate and a chest and open those, and then run back towards the Queen's Gate entrance and smash those. From there, I just sort of go along this path that you're seeing here on video, and I found this to be pretty effective. The advantage of opening a combination of chests and random boxes and crates is that the chests will occasionally drop more gold bars, which will increase your gold yields per run. 
You can also get into situations where you encounter mimics, which will also boost the amount of gold that you get per run, assuming you do the encounter. Simply run this route I'm showing here, and you'll get a ton of gold. I've found that in about two minutes, I can net anywhere between 200,000 to 300,000 gold on a consistent basis. This plays out to about 1 to 1.5 million gold every 10 minutes, and about 6 to 9 million gold an hour. This is assuming you're at level 40, chaos level 20. If you're not, you can also run this route, you just won't get quite as much gold. But still, more than you might if you were to, say, farm a boss. As for other methods, you can do chaos trials. The only thing is that you need empty inventory, and you need to be able to complete the runs really quickly. This is anecdotal, but I found that I can get around 40,000 gold per run. However, it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes. Which in that much time, I could have just run around the overworld and gotten more gold. The other downside with the Chaos Trials too is that your gold drops compete with the crystal drops, and naturally, the crystals are weighted more than the gold is for good reason. After all, you want crystals, not necessarily gold. You can also take on some badass enemies as you're normally playing the game. The areas I like best for this are the Murder Church and Tangle Drift, and some of the badasses that spawn around Drill's Gallery in the Drowned Abyss. I like these areas mainly because they have choke points and you can kind of thermopylae the enemies here. It's a little risky, but if you have a solid melee build and use the pickaxe, this can also be a pretty effective method. Just remember to get a gold pickup from a chest before you start smacking enemies around. Overall, I'd say if you're looking for good methods to acquire gold, the following are the best that I've found. Assuming you combine these with selling loot, you could very easily get into the millions and buy a lot of those upgrades that you really want, or buy that goblin repellent or whatever unique you see at a vendor. And best of all, you're doing this in a relatively glitch-free way. Maybe Gearbox patches the game and nerfs the goblin pickaxe, but at the same time, maybe they patch the game and make the goblin pickaxe drop a consistent amount of gold each time. That I think would be ideal, but we'll have to wait and see. Otherwise guys, that's going to video this wrap up. If you like this video, definitely be sure to caress that like button, smack the bell, and as always and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and have a good one.